Today we'll check out the brand new Swift-based microcontroller board from Swift.io. This maker kit contains all kinds of sensors, a really powerful processor, and is based on the Swift programming language. Brand new to me. Join me as we check out this hardware, try and get an LED to blink, and see what it's made of. When Swift.io reached out to me, I admittedly knew nothing about their hardware and even less about Swift programming language, but I agreed to take a look at it because I like supporting these new kits. Uh, a while ago, I, I did some videos on the JigMod Arduino system, and I thought I always like giving them uh, the benefit of the doubt and helping them out because you never know, they might have stumbled onto something that'll be really cool for us hobbyists and makers. The long and the short of it is, this little microcontroller is able to run the Swift programming language and has a lot of support for these different pre-made modules and, and different hardware that you might be able to make a pretty cool project out of or learn to code. The hardware is actually pretty crazy. Cortex M7, 600 megahertz, 46 GPIO, 12 12-bit analog to digital converters, and so much more. I went over to DigiKey to check out the actual processor information because, well, that's where Google took me first. And they, these things are pretty wild. For a real-time operating system option, this might be pretty fun. Swift.io had lots of stuff on their website, different tutorials and download links for the code and the IDE, and I had no problem finding anything. So I decided, what the heck, I'll accept the kit and we'll give it a go. GPIO breakouts are easy to find. This can actually be pretty hard for some microcontrollers. All looked pretty cool. I think I can build a project with this. Maybe you're like me and know nothing about the Swift programming language. Well, I found the keynote and here's a couple of highlights. Swift is fast, it is modern, it is designed for safety, and it enables a level of interactivity and development that you've never seen on the platform. Basically, it boils down to being much, much faster than Python or Base Objective C for many different things. I'm not sure how many things it would actually be slower for. I imagine there's some, but according to the Apple keynote, this thing walks all over Objective C and Python for a lot of different tasks. Pretty handy if we have a specific project where we need to move quickly. Pretty impressive stuff for some projects. So let's go ahead and check out the hardware and see if we can build something. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly, as well as 24 seven tracking of your order from start to finish. Everything arrived in fine condition, and as I love these cases, I already kind of like this kit. I'm a big fan of these uh, flat tray style cases, as you've seen many, many times. I keep all my project stuff in these style. Came with a cool little note, thanks to for the, the support and whatnot. Well, thanks for a cool product, hopefully. And uh, they also gave me an SD card and a cable to go ahead and get this thing up and going. A little deeper into the kit, and this really does remind me of the Jig Mod kit system. A, a completely modular uh, approach with uh, pre-made cabling instead of jumper wires. That I'm not a huge fan of, but for new players, it does make sense. And in here is our main micro. Very cool, comes in its own box. This thing reminds me a lot of a BeagleBone Black looking kind of style, if that makes sense. Getting a little more up close and personal with the board. This is a pretty cool looking board. This is well laid out, very clean. Uh, I like the solder mask. I like the design. I like the labeling. It just, it just looks good. It looks high quality. I see nothing wrong here. But does it work? Well, we'll have to find out. All the chipsets are exactly as listed out on their on their website, and uh, I'll link them down below if I remember. Otherwise, quick Google will probably take you to DigiKey as it did me with all the information. Obviously, the data sheets on this stuff is massive. 
Now they've gone and done a, a shield style approach. It's the, the same as the Arduino form factor. Uh, it's got everything broken out for the different plug styles. They're all just standard, same pin count, same layout. Yeah, but the everything is silk screened really well, well label, labeled. Uh, barrel jack for power, uh, pretty much everything we're gonna need. And here you can see the Arduino form factor. On the right, that's the jig mod system I was talking about before. I don't think they ever made it as a commercial entity, which is too bad, but hey, throw my support anyway. Same as any other shield with any other Arduino or other form factor, they just sandwich together, no worries at all. Slightly surprising, there is an instruction book. These are pretty rare nowadays, and they don't need to be crazy in depth in my opinion, just the basics, and this has it. Good high quality pictures, a step-by-step -step instruction just, just to get you started. And I had no problem following it. Uh, I was able to download the stuff as you'll see, and we're just going to try and blink an LED. I think that's a good place to start. Quick look at all the different components, humidity sensors, motor driver modules, switches, light sensors. It's all listed on their website. It's all the standard stuff like buzzers and potentiometers and uh, rotary encoders, stuff like that. You're going to find in any other Arduino starter kit. This, this is tried and proven. These are the things that will generally get you started with a human to machine interfacing is the key in my opinion you always want to have an lcd panel some kind of an output to the human and then some input stuff whether it be rotary simple as a button or rotary encoders or potentiometers and the buzzer and stuff pretty helpful as well but standard fare Of course, I use the SD card that they sent with the kit. This way we know what's up and down and if it works, just a 16 gig card, nothing to it. Now to download their IDE, it was in a Google Drive location linked from their website. So not the most pro thing, but I'm guessing I'm pretty beta at this stage. So we'll overlook that. Maybe they'll uh, get some professional uh, file hosting later on. Now I'm just running AVG on this PC and of course Windows got upset, but then a reoccurring theme was AVG antivirus protection scanner really does not like this hardware and this software. This pop-up was a constant part of my life for the next several hours as I tried to deal with these problems. Just never ending fight with the virus system. Um, I ended up actually turning it off because I couldn't seem to allow permissions for everything to operate. But anyway, proceeding with the IDE install, no problems. With the IDE installed, I was able to find their examples. There was kind of a duplicate, two different sets of the same examples, but I did figure it out. And as you'll see here, the constant annoyance of AVG just <laughs> this this was very irritating so eventually I shut it off now even once I got the examples loaded I didn't have much luck getting them to download to the board I'm not sure what I was doing wrong here I think I just need to spend some more time with it but I was up and down and fighting with it for probably close to an hour Eventually I got it figured out. I was able to load the example and do what I thought was going to download to the board. What kind of threw me was the sheer length of time it took to actually program. I didn't anticipate this. Grand total, 51 seconds just to finish compiling. And this is a pretty powerful laptop. I think that is going to be a bit of a problem. That is not anything in my power to fix, but we did get where we wanted to go. And in the end, we ended up with a flashing LED on the board. The blink sketch finally worked. The code was compiled and sent to the board as intended. So mission success. I thank you guys for sitting through this. I hope this is of a help to someone. Uh, I'm 
really interested in the power of the Swift programming language. And I think I'll be using this controller again, probably for very specific projects, but we shall see. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Click a thumbs up if you sat through this this long, guys. Truly appreciate uh, you guys coming along these journeys with me. Have a good day.